From Alon Shvat, it's an honor to interview Reb Ruven Tarragon. He's uh, basically the head of Yeshiva Takotel. He has a long, a long biography of accomplishments, etc. But we only have 30 minutes, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And Rabbi Nechani, she's a Yoetze Talacha. Life doesn't get better than that. Also with a long line of where she says speeches, senior lecture, etc. We're going to keep it brief. Welcome, Rabbi Ruven and Rabbi Nechani. Thank you. So I'm going to make an assumption here. I'm going to say that we're living in a unique, unprecedented time where parents are home with their children three months, six, we don't know how long. And at the time, it feels very oppressive and confining. I think that years later, when we talk to our grandchildren, this is going to be some magical moments. Do you remember the time we were? What as mechanchem, two great mechanchem, what hanhagot should we have in place that we look back at this as a magical time rather than living in a gilded prison? Uh, that's an excellent question. And I think that just as you said, taking advantage of these phenomenal chinoch opportunities is something that we as parents definitely don't want to miss out on. Whether it's Shabbos, definitely Pesach. Our children were so excited that for the first time ever, we spent a Pesach at home and a little Haseder surrounded by Hena, by our children, Zivrei Torah. And certainly when it comes to, to Shabbos, day in and day out, also Tzfilah, how often do we get to Davin all together? and then see children, seeing parents daven, parents making sure, and not just overseeing, but really davening with their children, engaging in different acts of chesed, children being involved in the kitchen, out of the kitchen. It's really this family time. I think the chesed that begins at home that we can really teach them now. I would add to what uh, my wife said, that sadly we live in a time in general where people are so busy out of the home. And even when they're home, they're busy out of the home. We all know that family is the most important thing to us. And now we have an opportunity to be at home more with family. So are we giving the message to our children that, oh, we really like to be doing other things, but we're kept at home with you? Or are we giving the message, what a great opportunity this is to be able to be together as a family? Isn't it a great opportunity to be kovea itim with your children? My wife and I have been doing our best three times a day to have a set time for a meal together, learning together, and then playing a game. We've been playing rummy cube with our kids. How many times do we have the chance to learn three times a day with our children? I think it's a special schus. And I want my children to know that I'm happy about that. I'm sad about what's going on in the world, but I'm happy that I have this opportunity to spend family time. It's all a matter of how we present it. And I would say, I would just add on that the first mitzvah given to Klal Yisrael, first one is not Kiddush HaKadosh, which is given to Bezdin, but is the Yikulachem Ish, Sell a base of ice, sell a bias, a family meal, right? And Yom Kippur, what do we speak? By, yeah, by, by Mafta Yaina, like the highlight right before Nila, what do we read? We read the Parsha of Arias because the Torah is telling us the value of family, and nothing is more destructive to family than affairs, than God forbid, other type of you know, sexual relationships that are us, which are all familial relationships. It's all to underline the fact that family by Kali Yisrael is the first mitzvah. Let me ask you, um, you're both famous mechanchem. What makes a great mechanach? What characteristics in the way they approach chenach make somebody special? As a machanach. I'll let the best machanach I know answer that. And then I'll go to that, the best one I know. So uh, I think chinuch, as the verb itself connotes, is about building. And building isn't just information that one is going to let to pass or teach someone else. Chinuch is building in the classroom, out of the classroom, is building a personality, is serving as a role model in every aspect of life. You know, all too often we, we know and we see different people who are phenomenal teachers and then they come home and they relax or they and aren't necessarily as focused on, on what, they, what they've been 
that they've been doing all day, and especially for children, but also for students to know that this is Tofo Kivaro 24 seven, and to, uh, to truly be invested in that, and also to love one's Talmidim, and they feel it. And I tell me them, tell me those, whether it's conversations out of the classroom, whether it's it's coming to your house for Shabbos, it's even the way that you engage with them. Certainly while you're teaching them, whether you give them the time, the face, the eyes, the again, the the extra chizuk that they need. And to point out, you know, you look a little sad today. And Achinoch is all about building personalities and building relationships. I only have one thing to add to what my wife said about loving Talmidim. Uh, many years ago, I had a Talmud who went into Chinuch, and he asked me for advice. I wrote up a whole document full of suggestions. And then I said to him, you know, I'm only going to give you one, because I'm afraid if I give you the whole document, you won't know how important the one thing I'm telling you is. People care about people they feel care about them. The Iker, I believe, in Chinuch is that Talmudim feel you really care. And not in a fake way that you buy them a prize, they put your arm around their shoulder, but that you see in them something. They know that you see value in them, that you appreciate who they are and what they bring to the table, that you see potential and godlut in them. And that is a huge thing, I think, in our generation when people are being pulled in so many different directions to have a Rebbe who believes in you, who cares about you, and will do whatever it takes to help you. Um, I heard from, uh, forgetting from Farakaway, one of the big Rashi Yeshiva there said, if you don't love children, don't go into Chinuch. Better you should shech chickens than shech children. Wow, how powerful. You know, it says, V'hayu hadzvarim ha'ila alav avecha v'shinantam levanecha. V'dibarat abam b'shivra of kumach. But v'shinantam levanecha is immediately preceded by V'hayu hadzvarim ha'ila alav avecha. If it's not in your heart, you can't teach your child. Right? That's right. Um, many, um, many are, are using this. There was, Mashiach is coming. The coronavirus is here. Mashiach is coming. Well, <coughs> hopefully, but if he doesn't come immediately afterwards, those who are being Mechanach, Mashiach is, must be coming because the coronavirus is here. So then the child gets, it's like a little bit like a punch in the gut. Do you believe in that, Chanach? How do we address such a, like, how would you address that? I think I once heard a story of a Hasidic Shorah who every time his son would come home from, from a shidduch that didn't work out, he would say mazel tov. And the son said, but I just told you it didn't work out. He said, yes, but you're one step closer. I think firstly with regard to chinuch, we definitely have to encourage our children that every day and every act of chesed and every mitzvah and every tefillah, <coughs> and yes, even the Yisur and Shalahava, we're one step closer. But Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi says there are two ways for Gula to come. And I think that this is such an empowering and strong chinuch to invest in our children. Bi'ita, there's a time for Mashiach, and we never, we don't know exactly when that is. Bi'ita, lo zachu. Achishena, zachu. That we can hasten Mashiach. Tenkan, we thought that this was going to be a sign of Gula. I think we have to be very careful in educating our children that we can be part, we're meant to be catalyzing the stages of Gula. The uh, Nevoot are going to come true with us or without us, but ideally, if we could be active participants in our Gula, Matzobu Manaim. And the best way is certainly through uh, mitzvos, through Ben Achdos, Ben bringing Am Yisrael together every day to look for opportunities to bring us even one step closer. And I think, you know, what my wife is saying is 100% correct. And um, it's a matter of empowering them instead of making them feel like it's something happening around them. Let's teach our children that this is a time when Mashiach can come because the world is shaking. And that's when especially Mashiach can come. But the question is not whether he'll come, but whether we'll take advantage of the opportunity to make ourselves more worthy of his coming. Let's turn it from predicting and talking passively about what's going to come to us to us taking responsibility to seize the moment and give more reason for Mashiach to be able to come. And in general, in Chinuch, it's about teaching children, what are you meant to be doing now? <coughs> lima, not madua, but lima. Towards what is this supposed to be pointing you? Now, you seem to be two parents who are really in touch with the children. You learn with them three times a day. You eat three meals a day. Now, 
there are many parents who, without school, without shopping malls, without bicycle rides for their kids outside and their playmates, the parents would go insane because they don't have patience. Maybe they're both type A personalities. Maybe they really didn't want to have kids, but societally they have to have kids. And now they're, start, they're different personality types and it's hard for somebody who's nurturing and loving to understand the other personality type, but this is molecular. Now this person is stuck at home and I'm saying they're not lucky to be home. They're stuck at home with their children, without the schools, without babysitters, without all these, and they're going out of their minds. What do you say to this type of a parent? How do they deal with this situation? So just as we mentioned a little before, every Nisayon, Chazal say on one hand, Yafashisho Dambamasav, that one has to look and see what can I work on and see it not so much as, as a punishment, oh no, this is torture, but rather as an opportunity. I'm a type A personality. I'm having a hard time with my children at home. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to work a little bit more on my midos. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to find creative means of, of recreation with my children. Maybe I have a very hard time with a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my child, in which case I can, Baruch Hashem, with technology today, with all the, the caution that we need with technology at the same time to take advantage of that. Baruch Hashem, Mi Ka'amcha Yisrael. We have such a nation with so many, so many chesed organizations. I just recently saw that there, there are chesed organizations too. Again, if you're having a hard time with the children, they say, don't worry. We'll enter entertain them for a little while. Again, I don't know exactly how they do this, again, whether it's Zoom or, but to take advantage, take advantage, not just of time, but of, uh, of true avodas amidos. I've been learning chovas atalmidim with, uh, with one of our children. And uh, I told him, I said, wow, this is great for me. I know <laughs> you may think that this is good for you and for all of us to, uh, to look. It means working harder. It means, just as you said, sometimes going a little crazy, planning ahead, taking advantage of what also our phenomenal kihila has to offer, and to also take some deep breaths and a lot of tefillah for Ziyat Dishmaya. Rambam writes in Hilchot Deot that in order to work on Midos, you have to go to the other extreme. You have to go to the other extreme. Maybe part of the message of Kodesh Baruch Hu has for us is that we need to go to the other extreme in order to live a more balanced life. I would tell people who are having a hard time being with their children that maybe it's indicative of the fact that it's hard for you in general to spend that special time with your children. So now we have the opportunity to go to the other extreme. And if we work on ourselves, as my wife is saying, to be able to do that better, maybe then we can come back to the happy medium of yes, having things outside of our homes, but knowing how to interface with our children personally and properly in our own homes. Um, and, and that may be part of the message here. How would you, as two expert mechanchim, how would you advise a parent whose child <clears throat> is dealing with, struggles with anxiety? And there's a lot of anxiety in the air. People are anxious about Parnassa. People in America, New York, I mean, has been struck. I mean, every, ain't bias, ain't from mace. I mean, literally everybody knows a neighbor, a friend, a grandparent, a, a cousin who's, who's had lost somebody. So it's both be, you know, Bagashmiist and Baruchniist, the shuls are closed. I mean, it's really unprecedented, both from Parnassa, health, spiritually, right? Um, familiarly, where we can't, re be, we can't be with the people we love. And you have people who struggle with anxiety. You have children, they're literally shaking. What would you tell a parent? How do you, what would you tell the child? How would you deal with the child? I think stage one, and I think this is a Devaraya Dua in psychology, not just child psychology, is the first role of the parent is simply to be there, literally to be there for the child, to, uh, to corroborate everything the child is saying, validate those emotions. And the child is scared, the child can't go to sleep, the child is afraid, has a family member can make it sick. Validate those feelings and say, it's okay, and we're all scared. And then once those feelings are validated and the child feels that someone understands them and is looking out for them, and maybe even we feel similarly to that child, then we can together with that child go to the next step. Okay, what makes you feel safe? And how can we transition then from this feeling of fear, from this situation that we're in right now to a safer zone? 
whether it's spending more time, whether it's kind of seeking sometimes outside help. And we have to realize that again, Baruch Hashem, we have so many prof professionals in our community. There are so many again, chinuch, Zoom opportunities to, to help parents deal with this. And each child really, chinuch l'naro kidarko, every child, and if you give them the time and you show them that love and you validate those feelings, will also be able to express what they need at that time. Sometimes it's really just sitting with that child and then knowing that child's love language, whether it's words, whether it's an activity together, and whether it's the, what the parent ultimately projects. If the parent projects bitachon, if the parent projects love and warmth and support, then the child is gonna feel that as well. For sure that validation is critical that children should know that we also have fears. It's okay to be afraid and, and it's legitimate. I would add what my wife said at the end about bitachon, not just to talk about belief in Hashem, which obviously is important, but to talk about our own histories. We've all been through things, nothing like this, but we've all been through challenges. And Baruch Hashem, we've come through and we've learned through them that, that, that there, are, there are difficulties but, and, and there are problems, but we come through. And that life experience can help people who are younger who may not have had these experiences be more confident. And when I said our histories, I mean not only our personal histories, I mean our history as a people. When you consider what Am Yisrael has been through, this is nothing. This is small fry. <clears throat> and if Am Yisrael has successfully weathered the storms we've weathered, we know that we're going to continue in Mirz Hashem, Bezrat Hashem forward. Now, like we said before, each individual has to rise to the occasion and do their part to ensure their future in the Jewish future. But we're confident that we're going to come out of this stronger than we were before, because Am Yisrael always does. And that's the bitachon, not just to say, which we should say, we believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but we've seen him, we've seen his role for 3,500 years. And we know that we have many, many glorious ones ahead of us. How important, how important is, this, I'm sorry, go ahead, Rabbi. Rabbi uh, if we use this as an opportunity really to, to not only teach our children, but for us to gain a sense of resiliency and dealing with trauma, then uh, these are skills that we're all going to need for life and certainly our children. Here's an opportunity to give them to them now. So talk about resiliency. How do we build resiliency both in us and our children? Oh. This is, uh, I would say, the, uh, the question of the century because this is certainly a mitzvah that we all need. We all need so many different situations. Just as you said, economic challenges that we face. So I think stage number one is tefila. Knowing that we're really, that we're not alone. Knowing that we have not just a connection, but communication with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And to know that we always say here, that we have upon whom to rely and forging and strengthening that relationship is stage number one. A relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu like an Ablabanim, but speaking then like a parent to a child, also to know that our children have that relationship with us. To know and even just being here, physically here, and certainly emotionally here for our children. That is the greatest, the greatest means. So many psychologists and teachers have written about this, that having, having people who are stable in your lives, and that's, I think, what's so challenging today as well. People saying family members, who unfortunately, Law and are, are getting sick, but to know that there are always going to be people there caring for them, people within their family, friends within the community. And if we can reach out, Dafka now, to show them, yes, someone is always there for you, starting with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that will give them the chizok to just keep moving on and being there for others. I'll just add a point about resiliency. We live in a culture where people glorify self-pity. Woe is to me, I can't succeed, it's this one's fault, it's that one's fault, and it's convenient to feel that it's not in your own hands. We were talking before about Mashiach, it's up to Hashem. My own fate is my parents' fault, my teacher's fault, my friend's fault, the world's fault. I think a message we need to give our children is, in the end, you don't choose the reality you find yourself in, but you 100% choose how you respond and what happens to you moving forward based on the realities you face. 
And that's an important message for children to know it's in their hands. It's biyadam. And that was the message that Elazar ben Dordaya, the famous uh, story about him, was the great sinner. And then he wanted to do tshuva and he looked for all kinds of ways for others to help him. And then he finally came to the conclusion, Ein hadavar tali elabi. The thing depends on me. And he did such a powerful tshuva that he died and the baskol came out and said, Rebbe Elazar ben Dordaya is in the next world. And Rabbi Yudha Nasi said, not only does he go into the next world, but he's called Rebbe. What did Elazar ben Dordaya teach us that he's called Rebbe? I can only say what he taught me. What he taught me is Ein hadavar tali elabi. Not the realities around you. That's not up to you. But how you respond is in your hands. And I think that's a key as element that we need to be mechanach in this generation. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Certain Lakewood Rosh Hashivas came out with a letter and they said they discouraged the use of kids <clears throat> attending class via Zoom. And they said, you know, um, Technology is very dangerous. 30% of internet use is for pornography, right? On top of that, you have all types of Kfira and Fortnite and, you know, Instagram and, you know, all, it's just, it's, it's mostly a sewer. Yes, there are a certain amount of it is for work, but it's a minority time spent on it. And they said, it's true that you know, your children will be able to be learn better for these few months, even a year, whatever the time is. But Hagam Lichbosh is Hamalka Imi Babayis. The whole the Jewish home was always a Migdash Mat, was always the Mishkan, right? The uh, the Prima Godim, no less than we talk about a Litvak, says that you should light the whole wick, Arab Shabbos, Shahitheves Oila Mele, just like in the base on Migdash. So when the woman lights the Shabbos candles, those are the candles of the Beis HaMegdash. We learn the halachas one from the other. Don't light a little part of the way. So the Jewish home was the man of the Beis HaMegdash. So they said, you're bringing what is potentially with one wrong keystroke, right? Shail tacht this into the house, and it's just not worth it for your child to have a better experience. It's like bringing a loaded gun into your house. And I know that, you know, you're... I would love to hear your opinion on that. Obviously, this is a machlokis between the great gedolim of our generation. So, Elu Elu Divri Elakim Chaim, and clearly, people like us, I can speak for myself, we, uh, we don't have an opinion of right or wrong. That having been said, I can speak a little bit about the pros and cons. <clears throat> and I think the question is complex because clearly, there are many, many parts of our tzibur that before this had internet, have internet and will continue having internet. The question you're discussing is mainly for people who have not had internet, and that's a very serious question. You know, oh, well, let me, let me think me, about the short... Reverend Ruben, let me... People who have been very careful about exposing their children to internet. That's how I would put it. Whether they don't have it or they have it in a very limited capacity. Yes, yeah. Now it's opening a Pandora's box, and that's a huge, right. huge question. Right. It's a huge, huge question, and the question is the short term and the long term. And Baruch Hashem, we have great gedolim, like the ones who wrote that letter. And if there are other letters that are also written by gedolim who can give guidance to their tzibur, and each one should yeah. follow their posek. Um, for the tzibur that has had internet, obviously it's a matter of challenging it, of channeling it, figuring out how to use it. <clears throat> and, you know, one of the takeaways from all this may be that Zoom, for those who use the internet, can become a kli that people can use in a very powerful way. Nobody, Maybe to be able and to they don't... And they don't deny that. The same right, thing I understand that they're talking to powerful. people who don't have or limit you into that. But it's the, it's the, it's the nisayon of the generation, they say. And you see it in yeshivas, how kids now have nanosecond um, concentration spans. You give them a hot typhus, it's like, they, it's like anything more than two seconds. We had on one Rosh Hashiva from Eric Stroll who said 80% of the boys he's seen have, had, have been on sites that they shouldn't be. So their attitude is, is like, would you bring a loaded gun into your house because uh, you have so you believe in the Second Amendment? I mean, and leave it around the children. And I don't ask you that from a the paskin. I'm just asking you that as mechanachim. How do you see that? And now your child's on Zoom, but the tablet has become his best friend. So I'm curious, as mechanachim, how would you address that? Yes, I think just as you said, 
And it's not so much bringing the gun into the house. Unfortunately, the gun is already there. And if it's not in the house, then the child has, if you were using that muscle, then the child has access to it. You know, it's everywhere. And if he doesn't have a cell phone, his best friend has a cell phone. And I think that once again, we, the mechanchim, starting with parents in the home, have to be the ones to set the guidelines. And we can try, we can try the sore meira approach as much as possible, try not to, not to, but there's also the assay tov. And by that I mean truly, again, not just channel, but set very, very clear guidelines. And that's chinuch, that's with any yetzer, with any desire that we have. So whether it's to limit it to a certain number of hours, we have our children sitting around the main areas, the dining room tables, not so that we can chas v'shalom spy on them, just so that they know someone's watching. I know we, we, we should be focused again on, on Torah, on, on our assignments. For everyone to know as well, there are always going to be situations in life. If it's not now, then they're going to be exposed to this billboard. They'll be exposed to, to this television show, to know and limitations, to know gvulot. And I think that that's really one of the maladies of this generation, that people don't know where to set borders. And it starts really at home. It starts with borders of time. It starts with a channeling. We can even sit down and have a conversation as to the dangers, recognizing, again, the dangers that are there. And sometimes when they're at point A, they don't even realize, again, that point A is going to lead to point Z, and we want to stop it before it gets there. And to hold their hands and to do it together with them. And instead of being so afraid, and we're always so reactive, Chinuch is really about proaction. And this is a phenomenal opportunity for Machanchim to show how we can use everything that Kaddish Baruch created in this world for good. And yes, as we know, and everything can be used potentially for bad, let's try, try step by step, again, to bring them in that positive direction. Since we're speaking about the uh, internet, let's say I believe there's three aspects we need to work on. Okay, those who don't have internet, that's one track. Those who have internet and face the challenge, I believe we need to work on three areas and all three are necessary. The first, is to have protective steps. To have an internet without a filter is a very big challenge and we have a responsibility to protect ourselves. My Rebbe Rav Mordechai Willig Shlita talks about how there's an Isra Yichud with a computer. <clears throat> and we all understand what that means. And all of the protective steps. The second thing is to understand the Chumrah of the Isra. Not just halachically, but to understand how much damage a person does to themselves, their marriage, and their future if they get caught in these kinds of areas. The protective steps without understanding the danger won't be enough because people can go around it. The danger without protective steps isn't enough because you're not protected. And then there's a third area. We have to find a way of getting ourselves and our children as involved in meaningful things as possible. The Rambam writes that issues of arias seep in when there's a vacuum. It's not enough to protect. Exactly. It's not enough to protect. It's not enough to know the Chumrah. It's not enough to sur me raz, my wife was saying, but also to make sure to fill their lives with as much content as possible. And if in the past people were hesitant, my kid will be in an extra club, he'll be on a sports team, he'll let's try and get our children as, as involved with good, neutral, good and neutral content as possible. You know, there's a word from the Goyen where he writes that there's Ben Adam L'chaveray, Ben Adam L'makayim, Ben Adam L'chaveray, Gilei Arayas, I'm sorry, he says, Avay Dezar is Ben Adam L'makayim, Ritzich is Ben Adam L'chaveray, Gilei Arayas, he says, is Ben Adam L'atzma, the damage we do to ourselves. Okay? Well, if you had to close with a thought, what would it be? <clears throat> wow. Oh, so many, so many. But we just have one minute. minute. Rabbi Ruben, okay, we have on one a minute. Block. We have one minute. Okay, so I would, uh, I would say two. Firstly, if that's okay, Chanuch Lenar Al Pidarko, recognizing, and I'm sure every Machanech is going to say this. And it doesn't just mean Al Pidarko Shel Hena Shel Hayeled. It's not just the derech of that child. It's uh, the derech of where they are at that point on their path and to see what they're feeling today, that changes, especially today, hour to hour, day by day, and really to be there, be there for the child with not just a listening ear, but a <coughs> holding hands, be there for our students, be there for, again, advice, but also, as we mentioned at the beginning, the love. And the other is, Ma sarasacha kol hayom hisi If uh, the ava that really, that starts not just in the home, the classroom, pervades our entire community, the conversation should be of Torah, and should be 
filled with the Ahava of the Torah. I think that when you create that environment, when we create an environment, a supportive one of love, then that's really, those are the stepping stones of Chinuch and success. I would conclude by saying an idea that I recommend people reflect on on their own and I'll share it personally. Over the past months, we've spent a lot of intensive time with those closest to us. And naturally, when you do that, you're reminded of some of the things that can bother you. But if we focus on the things that we love about the people in our lives, we realize that this has been the most special opportunity. And I can say that I consider it a great schut to have been able to spend such concentrated time with the person I consider to be the best person in the world. And it's been a reminder to me of how lucky I feel about my life and who I'm getting to spend it with. And I want to encourage everyone to look at the people in your life and appreciate them more than you did before. And expressing appreciation, Reb David, I want to thank you for your role in this program, interviewing all the couples and bringing thoughts of Chinuch to all of Am Yisrael at this special time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.